All right, guys, thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be in 1 Peter chapter 4 today. So, let's get into that. Let's get into some prayer. I hope everybody's having a wonderful and a blessed day. Man, one of my little things just tore off of my Bible page. I hate that about these thin ones, but this is the greatest Bible in the world. I love it so much, guys. My mom got it for me right when I started to get myself right the first time. Anyways, enough about that. Let's pray. Father God, I want to come before you today, Lord. I want to lift all the praise and all the glory up to heaven, Lord. Thank you for waking me up today, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful world that I get to live in, Lord. Thank you for my family, my loved ones, Lord. I thank you for all of our little animals here in the house and how well they're doing, Lord. I just... I thank you for my life, Lord. My life is so happy and it's so different than I ever even knew that it could be, Lord. And that's all because of you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for making a way for me and for everyone else out there who has been lost to be found and to have a surety and victory, Lord. I ask that you bless this video, Lord, that anybody watching it at any time is fired up, pulled in, and just... That it does something to them, Lord. That they can experience what I experience in myself, Lord, and in this world. Um, I ask, Lord, that you continue to allow us to be workers in this great harvest. And, and push us into saying or doing whatever it is that needs done or said. To bring more of the lost and the fallen into your fold, Lord. And I pray this in your holy and mighty name. Y'all, somebody out there better shout, Amen. And let's jump into this, guys. All right. 1 Peter 4. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable. To one another without grumbling as each one has received a gift minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God if anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of God if anyone ministers let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, 
What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to Him in doing good as to a faithful Creator. All right, guys. Amen, amen, amen. You know that last part where he's talking about that, that's just so true that, you know, there's a lot of hardships that we might face as Christians, guys, but think about how much worse it would be if you were not. All right, so let's jump back here and we're going to get into some of these verses. Thank you all for letting me share with you so, so much. All right, guys, so, okay, so jumping into chapter 4, we are continuing to receive potent scripture that is sure, when applied, to offer clarity, encouragement, and a deeper ideal of which we can model our own day-to-day -day walk of faith. This chapter, as well as chapter 5, the concluding chapter of the letter by Peter here, um, zeroes in on God's grace amid suffering. Here, in verse 12, Peter speaks of a painful, fiery trial. This is a persecution, an oppression, that some were already facing off with, and those who were not yet, soon, in fact, would. Alright, guys, 4, 1, and 2. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. All right, guys. So on the subject of ceased from sin. Now, this can be a concept that's a little bit hard to grasp, or there are, in fact, many misinterpretations of it, okay? So... Because of Christ, our Lord and Savior, and His sovereignty, and the voluntary work that He did for us, okay, so bearing all of that in mind, we must approach suffering with the same mindset that He would have. Like our Lord, we must endure willingly, all while looking past this particular painful moment that we may be dealing with to God's true purpose. Living in this world, we will never fully die to sin, but all of our sufferings and hardships taken on for Christ and the gratitude that we feel over our salvation has a deeply refining and purifying impact on us, enabling us not to fully escape, but to certainly lessen the grasp that sin has on us now. Daily, we can experience a more potent, crucifixion of our own flesh all of this will allow a deeper focus on god and a more a more fervent drive in order to bring his will to bear on this world guys four three through five for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the gentiles when we walked in lewdness lust drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Okay, guys, so new converts and born-again believers are more prone to fall victim to peer pressure from old co cohorts and the like, who now think it strange that we no longer run with them, that we no longer join in in that old life of iniquity and wickedness. While we don't want to condemn or abandon those who are lost like we once were, caution is a must, and quite often, guys, all that we can do to safely maintain ourselves is to pray for them. But to be honest, that's enough. I'm here as proof of that. Care must be shown as these past companions are likely to have a corrosive or rotting effect on those walking in a fresh faith. Sadly, if distance isn't kept, one can easily be pulled back in to places of darkness and times of darkness. Alright guys, 4-8. 
And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Y'all, I'm reading that again. It's short, simple, powerful, to the point, and absolutely true. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. All throughout the Bible, and rightly so, love is supreme. And here, Peter again confirms this for us. In fact, fervent love, or translated more literally, love stretched to the limit, y'all. That's what fervent means. Stretched to the limit. So a love just getting as much as you can get out of that love because this is an active love. It's a biblical love. It's a love that reaches out to all. It is the type of love that gives 110%. This type of love is the love that we as Christians, must exemplify, and we must shine it like a spotlight into the darkened mall of this fallen world. We only use this light to illuminate what lays ahead. We don't use it to look back into others' past. No, in fact, this is the love that not only forgives, but it does so quickly. And what's more is once done forgiving, this is the love that will not retrieve that wrong. It won't pull that wrong back up and bring it back up. And it won't allow that wrong to set in the back of their own head and shade the way that they see you. No, this is the kind of love we all want and need. 4-9, guys. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Short, powerful, to the point. Hospitality in the ancient world was of particular import because Inns and places like this where you could stay or lodge were quite often very dangerous. And also, often there were no rooms or vacancies. Peter makes use of this as a potent comparison for living in a wicked world as believers. Yet one more reason that each of us, as God's elect, are called to show real love in our daily life. Always seeking to, to help in service to others regardless. Regardless of difficulties. 414, guys. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Alright, guys, so the spirit of glory and of God, i.e. the Holy Spirit, our great comforter, this tremendous wellspring of power indwells each of us as Christians. How glorious. God is our oyster. We are his pearl. See, an oyster takes a grain of sand that comes inside, and it takes it and it coats it and coats it until it becomes this beautiful, perfect thing. And that's what we are. God takes us and he uses our difficulties. And he washes over us with all that he is. And in the end, our character and our value are made unrivaled. 419, guys. Last one I'm going to share with you today. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. There is much that we don't or can't understand within the will of God. And suffering can sometimes be a part of that, and it is definitely within the will of God. In order, for, in order for anything and everything we do to work, we must give ourselves fully to Father God. After all, He is our faithful, loving Creator, and we have the assurity and the peace of mind that flows from Scripture. Like, for instance, Romans 8.28. Let me share that with you real quick. Romans 8.28, guys. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Alright, guys. So, with that in mind, in short, the correct reaction to all of our trials, tribulations, and hardships, oppressions, and persecutions is not only endurance, but trust also. We show God with our good actions that we trust Him, not with our words. He doesn't need those. All right, guys, if you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this 
six days a week, and I promise if you can put up with me, I'm going to say something that you want and need to hear, guys. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, if you want to share it. My heart goes out to you. Um, any prayer requests, any comments, guys, drop those down here into the comment section. Please, please, please go out there, have a blessed day, and tell somebody how much God loves them. I love you. Jesus loves you so much more than that, guys. And I'm going to see you tomorrow. You better get out there and have a blessed one.